Welcome back to another episode of Fun Facts. So can we guess what we're doing today? School of Rock! Just because Jack Black is awesome and, you know, I enjoy Jack Black. If, um, this, I'll be honest, this, like, ever since I was with, like, been, like, my boyfriend known, um, been with him, he, um, we've gotten, he's gotten into Tenacious D, but I don't think I've really heard of him until, like, like, just a couple years ago that he told me about them, and maybe, I think he found out about them for a while now, I don't know, anyways, um, so I watched the movie, it was really funny, it was really good, and now I'm going to be doing fun facts of School of Rock today, because we love, because I love School of Rock, it was a good, it was a classic, it's a classic movie to me, I know it's probably not a classic, but it's a good movie for sure, so let's get right into it, go check out my animal, um, my animal reaction channel and a bunch of other channels I have behind it, okay, let's go, let's get into some fun facts. Okay, fun facts. Here we go. Just give me one moment. <laughs> okay. Number one, the writer is also a co-star. Mike White provided the screenplay of School of Rock, but he did more than simply write the film. He also plays the real Ned Schneebly, the substitute teacher that Black's uh, Dewey Finn pretends to be. I love that. Uh, <coughs> I didn't know, or I didn't like the girl that played his, um, Mike White's girlfriend, or the real Ned Schneebly's girlfriend. She was just mean and just wanted to take him, um, take Black or Dewey's down so much. I don't know why, but he did. <laughs> Number two, it was part of a collaborative run for White and Black. White and Black were friends who also worked together on Orange County, which White wrote prior to School of Rock. White would then not, White would then Nacho, play Nacho Libre, which starred Black as well. Oh, I see. I'm like, Black and White. One's last name's Black, the other one's. Okay. Which starred Black, Jack Black as well. The two had a production company together called Black and White. But it's shuttered in 2006. Oh, that sucks. White actually wrote School or Rock to Black's interest. In this movie, Black or Jack Black plays a musician. I'm not going to keep saying Black. Jack Black plays a musician with love of classic rock. Um, and then White actually had no interest in that style of music. He wrote the film with Jack Black in mind for the lead role and catered it to Black's own history performing rock, rock music as one half of Tenacious D. It was simply uh, a cult rec record, or inspired by a cult record. Uh, he got, White got the inspiration for School of Rock in the part from the Langley School School's music project. Basically, back in 1970s, a British, or a teacher in British Columbia had recorded a bunch of kids at four schools in his district singing Toro, uh, versions of pop hits of the time. It came out kind of spooky. The records were not uh, notable at the time, but in the early 2000s, they were discovered, released, and quickly became a cult object that happened in, oh, in 2001, and then School of Rock would be... Okay, I got cut off there by accident. I had to take a phone call. So, uh, one of the kids' cast became a star as a movie about a school teacher who turned his class into a band. There are a ton of child actors in School of Rock, one of them would end up skyrocketing to fame. Miranda Cosgrove made her adult debut as Summer Hathaway, Hathaway in the movie, and she would eventually become well known as the titular star of iCarly. Right. Uh, I, I love the, the her trying to sing or whatever. Well, how did it go? Sing all alone in the moonlight or something. That was funny. Yeah, I liked that. <laughs> uh, I couldn't sing for the life of me, but man, that, I, I don't know. I loved every single one of these actors. They, they came with good character, these ones. Uh, let me know if you're a huge fan of School of Rock. I loved it growing up. I watched it 
almost, I don't think on a daily, but a lot when it was on. I liked watching it. I, I think I liked it more when I was, like, in my later, not teens, but, um, no, not teens. Um, like, preteen, maybe? Or, like, when I was 8, 10, kind of thing. One moment was inspired by reality. Dewey Finn tries to stage dive at one point in the movie, but it turns out disastrously. Uh, Jack Black added this into the movie based on a real occurrence he had witnessed. Apparently, the same thing happened to Ian Astbury, lead singer of the band The Cult. Oh, so that's another inspiration. A college stood in for the school. Director, director Lit Richard Lankleader made use of several New York City locations in shooting the film. That includes the school that stands in the in for her race, Green Prep. The location of that school was in Main Hall Building of Wagner College on Staten Island. Oh, nice. I like the, the teacher, or the one who played the principal. I really enjoyed, um, I like her acting. She could be pretty funny sometimes. One hallway got a lot of work. Schools are littered with hallways typically, but instead of moving around the location, Link later and company decided to just stay put and change the look around them. They shot every angle hallway scene in the film in the same hallway. That makes sense. Black did uh, plenty of riffing. Jack Black is the kind of comedic performer who likes to riff, which is obvious if you've ever seen his movies or seen him on a late night talk show. In fact, he came up with all the nicknames he uses for the stu students in the film. Oh, definitely uh, could see that. Link later had one request to direct. Uh, Link later was approached to direct School of Rock, and he was interested. However, there was one thing he wanted, namely, all the kids in the film had to actually be playing their instruments to make that happen. Uh, he did the casting across the United States, looking for kids who were talented music musicians, as opposed to finding uh, focusing on finding actors. I like that. That's so genuine. Where these kids, they just uh, they actually know how to. Um, and play an instrument so it's not all phony it's it's realistic oh sorry an ad popped up of the whole Gordon Ramsay uh, accident he had I just can't get over how his um, his body looks that that's a really bad bruise how is it not in a cast or something like oh anyways Cosgrove had to learn to not sing well uh, her Cosgrove Summer doesn't get into the band because she can't sing, but during the song Memory, that's from the cats in the process, in reality, Cosgrove had the ability to sing. She was given a quick bad singing lesson in order to nail what they were looking for in the movie. Link, la Link later has a cameo and shows a photo of the band that he and Ned had been, toge had been in together before Ned went straight and got his teaching gig, also in a photo, no other than Link later himself. This story got le a little less dark, which is really good. Um, so, um, that's cool. I, I like how the story does. It, it lightens up. The principal lightens up. And stuff like that. Sorry, I'm just messaging my boyfriend. Okay. Okay, so the story got a little less dark. Dewey is able to pose as Ned for a long time, long term substitute because the real teacher slips in the shower. That's not exactly cheery, but originally the story was darker in an earlier version of the screenplay. Dewey hit the teacher with his car. Oh, okay, that's what they meant by that. I just thought it was it gets lighter throughout the day, like the, the movie itself, but that makes sense. Um, okay. Link later pulled out all the stops to get one song. The director really wanted to use Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin in the film and on the soundtrack. However, getting 
Led Zeppelin to sign off on one of their songs being used as rare. In an attempt to curry their favor, Link later show a video of Black asking the band for permission to use the song with extras cheering and chanting behind him. He then sent the video to surviving members of Zeppelin. It apparently worked as the song is in the film. It had a nice run at the box office. After debuting debuting number one in the domestic box office, School of Rock would stay in the top ten for six weeks. The movie was made on a budget of $35 million and made $131.3 million worldwide. It was the highest grossing uh, music-themed comedy ever until Pitch Perfect 2 overtook it in 2015. Come on, Pitch Perfect. I would rather School of Rock. It was more genuine. There was kids involved who wanted to become rock stars themselves, and he taught them that like basically don't be afraid to do anything and I love that with with um, Jack Black there. Okay, let's move on to the next scene, uh, next sources which are, so I have three different sources up. I used Yard Barker, uh, next one is Huffington Post. So here we go. School of Rock was written by, oh, we got that. Um, <coughs> so Mike White was actually inspired to write School of Rock by his experience being neighbors with Jack Black. Imagine what it might be like living next door to Jack Black. Well, it sounds like it's pretty much exactly what we'd expect, according to Mike, who was struck with School of Rock idea after living in the close quarters with actor and musician. Jack was my next door neighbor for a few years. He was starting to get a lot of heat as an actor, and he would occasionally give me scripts that had been submitted to him to star in. Mike explained to Paramount he decided he could do a better job and was inspired to write School of Rock. He said, I just remember how funny it was living with Jack at the time in New York. It felt like he was bringing the comedy home. I remember fire alarms going off and him in his underwear, wait, oh, going off and him in his underwear trying to turn off the fire alarms and bringing home Christmas trees and pine needles exploding all over the house. I felt like I was living in a Jack Black movie, literally both at the work and at home. It was a lot of fun. Oh, I would definitely, definitely love to live Jack Black. That would be so cool. My boyfriend would love that too. <laughs> Jack Black still considers um, School of Rock to be the pinnacle of his career. I totally agree. There's nothing better than when a star looks back at the performance with the same nostalgia and admiration as fans and the culture impact of School of Rock isn't lost on Jack Black. My best memory are just the group of kids and how funny they and great they were. It's definitely the highest of my career, I can honestly say. That's awesome. Okay, and next. Yes, all the kids in the school of rock. Yeah, we got that. And after those seven months were over, Richard Linklater had to replace one of those kids just in one week. I shouldn't even be saying this publicly, but said during a different oral history of the film with Rolling Stones, it was in rehearsals. There was a kid who wasn't with the program, so there were tough decisions to be made. I think he wanted a bigger part. Um, oh... The crew remembered the actor's unprofessional behavior, which included counting lines, including a culture of competition. I always tell people, hey, don't F with me. I, fight. I fired a kid on School of Rock. The director uh, joked. I'm sure he felt bad after doing that because he was just a kid at the end of the day. The child star's parents were initially a little worried that Jack Black might be a bad influence. Jack Black may be an actor brimming with comedic charisma, but parents were a little worried about his larger-than-life persona might influence their young kids. The thing what's wrong with that? Come on, let the kids know that they could do anything. The thing about Jack, as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral, the thing about Jack Black was we all came into, especially with our moms, as being 10-year-olds, with our parents being kind of terrified who played Michelle because, you know, you see him in, like, Orange County and Tenacious D and he's just so wild and out of control. And I think my mom was just terrified that he was going to be a terrible influence on me. 
because he played so many different parts before. Oh my god. But he was actually amazing with the kids in the film. On the contrary, Jordan said Jack was amazing behind the scenes and would be a regular presence on set. Miranda, Miranda Crossgrove, who played the precious Summer Hathaway, also said Jack was the best and would play games with young members of the cast. Apparently, the real moms of the kids could have been worthy of their own reality show. The parents of all child actors were apparently having plenty of fun behind the scenes while their parents were hard at work on, well, oh, while their kids were, I was going to say parents, the kids were hard at work on cin cinematographer Roger Stoffers recently told Rolling Stones that the biggest missed opportunity was the reality show movie about the moms. Cu customer Joseph Lacourt recalled a particular wild night out with all the mothers who, for the most part, were very quiet and religious and what have you. He took them to the New York drag bar lips, which ended up with some of the moms on all fours on their chairs and drag queens were spanking them while others were on top of the hood of a car smoking a joint and dry humping a tree. The next morning, we had a rehearsal for the Battle of the Bands in the Staten Island. Everyone had sunglasses, recalled the cinematographer. Unfortunately, some of the child stars had tough times returning to school after the film's release. Um, acting in the School of Rock was once a, in a lifetime opportunity for for much of the young cast, but not all their school peers saw it the same way. Uh, Joey Gatos Jr., who played the guitar-wielding Zach Mo Mooneyham in the film, said he was looked at like a three-headed freak when he returned to his hometown in, De in Detroit. I was looked at with, like a complete weirdo, and that was hard. He shared with Rolling Stones. I remember going to a football game in high school and some older girl coming up, smacking me in the face because look at that weird guy from the movie. People thought I, ha I had it all going on. I couldn't believe it. Wow. People are just mean. They're, they were jealous. That's that's all it was. They were jealous you got to be in the movie and they didn't. Uh, people should, you know, we should be teaching our kids to be happy for other people because that doesn't get us, get us anywhere. But anyways, that is it for me, you guys. Um, I got lots of, got you guys lots of fun facts to School of Rock. Let me know what other movies you would like to hear. Enjoy. Have an awesome day. Bye now.